I still remember Brother Justin. Brother Justin, I believe, has two appointments Sunday. Uh, one uh, Sunday evening. So let's Chestnut Grove. So let's let's do remember that. Let's do remember that. Can we sing I'm So Glad I'm Part of the Family of God? Do you have that song, Sister Kathy, where you can put that up there? Sorry for surprising you. I'm sorry. Let's stand to sing this today, and, 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 and let's just praise the Lord that we're part of a, we're not part of a community organization. Limestone has some good community organizations, they don't need any more, uh, but we're part of a church. I'm not talking about Limestone, we're part of Limestone. I believe Limestone's a good, good church full of good, good people, but we're part of the church, and, and I'm thankful today that we can praise the Lord for what he's done for us. Uh, we may have tragedy, and we will, but you know, we're still a church family. Amen? You will notice we say brother and sister around here. It's because we're a family, and these folks are so near. When one has a heartache, we all share a tear and rejoice in each victory in this family so dear. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. From the door of an orphanage to the house of the king, no longer an outcast, a new song I sing. From rags unto riches, from the weak to the strong, I'm not worthy to be here, but praise God I belong. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Amen. Aren't you glad we're part of the family of God? Amen. You may be seated. All hearts and minds clear this evening? I want to look at a familiar passage. I, I know that we looked at this not too long ago, according to my records. And I don't want you to think, well, he's just preaching reruns. I, I don't want you to think that. Uh, uh, but uh, as I, I've been traveling up 81 uh, some this week uh, and just looking, uh, and, and every morning has been different. Uh, Monday morning, uh, it was kind of cloudy, I believe. No, Monday morning, it was very foggy. Uh, it was, uh, uh, there were some parts, uh, especially uh, up past Kingsport when you crossed the Holston River there, that it was uh, very, very foggy. Uh, and other mornings, uh, you could see the sun peeking through the clouds. Uh, and then this morning, uh, I felt like a duck. Uh, every morning's different, isn't it? Uh, some mornings we wake up revived. Uh, I, I was speaking with Brother uh, 
Brother Keith, uh, you know, I can remember, used to, you know, I could get a couple hours of sleep uh, when I was about Patrick's age and I could just conquer the world. Uh, I need more than that now. Uh, so I've been going to bed earlier. Sometimes that works out. Sometimes it don't. But when I do, boy, don't I feel good when I wake up. I, that still does not make me a morning person, but I feel better. But every morning's different. We have different weather. We have different things on our mind. Uh, we went to bed with different, different worries. You, you, you mean to tell me, preacher, you worry? Well, yeah. Uh, you know, if I hit my finger with a hammer, uh, it, it's going to hurt. Uh, so I'm still going. I'm going to worry. I'm human. Uh, you know, some some mornings I wake up and I can really tell my blood pressure is not where it needs to be. Uh, that's not the day I need to eat ham and and all the good stuff. Uh, you know, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to make a joke. I'm not. But we all have concerns. We all have worries. We all have difficulties that come our way and are and are much a distraction. A much distraction. But you know what we have here today? We have a God that we can go to every morning that is always the same. That's always the same. You know, I wish I could tell you, church, that when we receive Jesus Christ, that we'll never suffer defeat or heartache or depression or loneliness or just disappointment or just there's some days nothing happened. We just don't feel good. Does that make sense? You know, or is that just me? I, I, I don't know. I'm just speaking my heart here today. But as, as, as I, as I uh, you know, made those trips these three mornings, uh, and I started thinking of, uh, of, of, uh, of this thought very early Monday morning, and I, I, I just, it's just what I was on my heart here today. So Psalms chapter 5, please. Psalms chapter 5. And I just want to look at this. Uh, we may have difficult mornings. Uh, you've heard me talk about our Sunday mornings. Uh, we're not going to give God, we're not going to give the devil the glory today, so I'm not going to talk about my Sunday mornings. <laughs> but Sunday mornings, you've heard me talk about them before. Uh, they're difficult. Why? Because the devil don't want us here. I know why he holds young families out of church. I, I know that. Uh, I, I know why he does that. Uh, I, I know why he holds people that, that work six and seven days a week uh, you know, out of the, the only day maybe they get off in a month. I know why because I've been there before. I know how difficult that is. And, and, uh, but there's just something special about the morning. And the older I get, the more special it becomes. Uh, the more sunrise I see is the more magnificent I think they are. But let's read here today. Psalms chapter 5 and verse 1 through 3. It says, Give ear, unto my Give ear to my word, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken unto me, unto the, excuse me, let me start out. Hearken unto the voice of, the, of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee I will pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. I will look up. Father, give strength here today. Lord, I thank you for the sweet spirit, Lord, we felt here today. And, and Lord, just the ability, Lord, to be able to share our heart. Lord, there's been some times that we, can't, we couldn't do that. Lord, just because it just wasn't your will or it just wasn't that time. But, Lord, I thank you for allowing us to share our heart this morning, this evening. And, and Lord, everyone else here to be able to participate in this. Lord, give us strength here today. Have, have your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, as I think, as I look, you know, there's something special about the morning and how wonderful it is. First of all, it's a new day. It's a new dawning. It's something new. It's, we're given a new slate. But yet so many times we drag those things and, 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 and that's just who we are. That's what we do. There's been many times that I've tossed and turned in my sleep and tossed and turned in my sleep and, and woke up with the same problems and the same issues. And as we see here today, we seem that in the quietness there speaks peace to our soul. Remember what I read just a moment ago? Do you remember what I read that it wasn't in the, the renting of the rocks and the great earthquake? It wasn't, in the, uh, it wasn't in the fire and it wasn't in the great wind, but it was in the still small voice. 
peaceful voice. With the, the wind, there wasn't no peace in the wind. We all know how wind is here in East Tennessee, right? You've all got your share now that you've moved, been here a few, a, few, a few months, almost a couple years now. You know, three years or four or two. You know, we, we know what the wind is and what kind of damage you can do. We know what fire is and what kind of damage you can do. You know, we know some of you all have lived out in California. You know what kind of damage an earthquake can do. There's no peace with that. But in a still, small voice, there's always peace. When you sit out on your porch, look out your window, go to your quiet place in the morning and see the majestic sunrise come up. When you experience the birds start chirping and you experience everything coming alive, there's just something very peaceful to our soul about that. As a light Dawns begin to break through, and darkness, there is life of a new day. Aren't you grateful today that there's life in a new day? The same problem still may be there, but we have a new day. And the same God that was there yesterday is the same God that's going to be there today. So he says here in verses, verses 3, it says, I will look up. That's what he says. It says, and we'll look up. He says, O Lord... In the morning, I will direct my prayer unto thee. He's saying, in the morning, I'm going to pray to you. Now, I have learned something, uh, and, 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 I, and a lot of older pastors warned me when I went full time. They said, now listen, your time will get away from you very quickly. You've got to manage it, or it'll manage you. I haven't done the best with that. I struggle a lot with that, but there is a lot of truth to that. And I have learned, if I do my, my devotions, feeding me, if I do my devotions in the morning, somehow my day just kind of fits better. It may not all fit in, but it fits better than what it would if I just left out and didn't have time for the Lord. There's a peace. Years ago, I was headed to Kingsport, and I thought, no, I'm going to stop. I'm going to take just a few moments. And I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm, I'm not going to do anything else uh, for this amount of time. I can't remember what the time was. I, I'm going to do this for this amount of time. I was taking a, a passage in the Bible and, and studying that and looking at it in depth. And I'm just, this is my time today and I've got to do it. And in the back of my mind thinking, but have you seen the list, Tim, that you have to do? So I went ahead and done it. And somehow that day, did you know everything got done? I have no idea. But only God. Because why? I allowed my voice to be directed to the Lord. I looked up and He filled me up. Does that make sense? And He filled me up. You know, when we think about this, we can think that how He fills us up. How He gives us joy. You know, coming in His presence is a very serious matter. It's a very serious matter. Don't raise your hand. But a lot of us have had to go before a judge. Maybe some of our feet is a little heavier than what it should be. So maybe we've been before a judge. Not saying any names. A few years back, I had to go with a young lady in front of a judge. And it brought my mind back to remember when my dad had to go with me in front of a judge. And she said, what do you wear? I said, you better wear what you're wearing to church. Why? Because I bet you best make a, a good impression because your case isn't very good. I said, when you go in front of that judge, you're going in front of his courtroom in his presence and don't waste his time looking like a slob. Now, that may not be very politically correct, but that's the way I want my children to, be, to know. We got in there and she voiced her case. I said, don't. Don't, don't uh, you, you dress him as judge or your honor or sir. You make sure that you give him uh, the title that's, that he earned that is due him. And you make sure that you reverence every part of that, even the bailiff, everyone. Okay. She went in and she done a very good job. She had to take some schooling. She had to do some other things. It went off a lot better than what I thought it would and what she thought it would. It was a very learning experience in all different directions. 
But when we go before a judge, how do we present ourselves? Respectfully. Why? Because it's a serious matter. It may be something as small as a parking ticket or small as a, a, tra- a traffic violation. You know, use your imagination as far as it can go. When we go into his, his court and go into his room, we're very respectful of that. It's even much more. It doesn't hold a candle when we go into the prayer room of the Most High God. When we go to his court, how is our heart? How that, are we presenting our heart in a pure manner? Because it's a serious thing. We can lift up our voice. We can speak up. We can look up. And then wonder maybe why prayers aren't getting answered. And maybe the problem is us. Maybe the issue's us. Because we're not taking the matter serious enough. Always when we come to God, it must be in holy reverence. Our time in God's presence should not be spent in talking. Now listen, all the time should not be spent in talking. We need to talk to Him. We need to. But we also need to listen. My grandma used to say, Tim, do you know why God gave us two ears and one mouth? So we can listen twice as much as we talk. I knew what she was going to say. We need to pray to Him. What's, what did it say there? It says, I will direct my prayers unto thee. We have to direct our prayers, verse 4 says. We have to direct our prayers unto thee. But we also have to listen. We also have to listen. My children are getting older. I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to listen. I want to talk too much. And if you all have any advice on that, I'll take it. But I've always been dad, that they've always been young, and they haven't had much big decisions to make. Sometimes it's my place just to be quiet and listen. When we come into His presence, we need to learn to be quiet many times and just listen. Listen to what He has for us. Listen to that still, small voice. Nothing else around. Nothing else else, uh, hindering us. Just listen to what He has to say to us. We see here in Psalms 85 and verse 8, part of that verse there it says, it says, I will hear what what God the Lord will speak. For He will speak peace unto His people and to His saints. It says, I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and unto his saints. Let's listen. Let's listen. Father, Lord, we love you today. We thank you for the testimony time. Lord, we thank you for this good singing time, for the prayer time. And Lord, just, just, the, uh, just the ability to laugh time. Lord, we thank you for that. Give us strength, Lord, in all we do and say here today. Lord, what we do, Lord, will glorify you in everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand this evening. If we need to come to the altar, let's come. Maybe there's a special need. Maybe there's, a, maybe there's a, uh, just a prayer item that you have. Maybe there's a praise. If we need to come, let's come. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me, amen. Aren't you thankful today He's good to us? Amen. Are there any other announcements or comments before we go tonight? Yes.